Morning everyone. Today we are with, his name is Blaze. I call him Blazy Boy. And he is a pretty much retired uh, event horse. Um, they've evented with him over the years and now he's just kind of Perry's buddy. So he just hangs out. But I'm going to take you along as I shoe his hind feet today. He's got pretty good feet. Nothing extreme, but just uh, do some trimming videos and just show you what I got and how we shoe him. I've also got my main helper with today, old Meg. She's all grumpy because she's not getting hoof trimmings yet, but won't be long till we get those. Let's do it. All right, let's do the uh, do the left hind first. Oh. I put new shoes on them last time, so these ones are actually going to reset. Oh, Meg. I don't know if you can hear my old vicious guard dog over there. She's just whining a little bit because she hasn't had her hoof trimmings yet. Old Meg, my bulldog over there, she just had a birthday last month. And she just turned 10. Alright, we're going to start by getting rid of some of the sole here. So this old boy here, he's at about just at six weeks. So this is kind of a typical amount of growth for him. He, he just grows a good amount. Now let's uh, start by getting trimming up a frog some. These are always kind of the hardest frogs for me to trim personally. Kind of get in here towards our apex. Got a little bit of nasty gunk going on in there, a little bit of thrush. So we'll sight it here, see where we gotta take foot off. And we'll start with a nipper run. Now we'll relieve some of the sole pressure here.
I'll just try to get the tip of our frog here a little bit better. Almost done, buddy. I'll give you a little break. All right. I'm going to give a little ba blaze here a break. Sight the foot here. See, we're gonna rasp it to get it flat. I know I got a little bit more toe to come off of him. He's still got a good amount of length here. Take another nipper run. Hey, if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And if you like this video and you like my other kind of videos, hit that like button. That helps me out as well. Helps me out if I should know to keep making trimming videos like this or what have you. So I'm going to start by easy buddy. When I'm rasping the foot I'm going to hit the high spots first and blend the high spots into the low spots. Gathering up the foot, the hoof wall. Relieve some of the sole pressure here. Need to let him set it down for a second again. So as I'm looking down this, I'm trying to look through the limb and then kind of look to see where my highs and low spots are. So right now I can kind of see that I'm still high right through here. I've got a little low spot right there, but that's because that's where the hoof wall kind of chipped off. So that's where I need to start with my rasp. Let's just hit those high spots again. One foot trimmed. Just trim the right foot.
It's kind of interesting, something I noticed from other channels and other uh, platforms. I notice people, other farriers, when they're fitting up shoes and go to burn them on, they just grab it, go to the horse, burn it. But I don't, there's one step that I'm always seeing that they're missing in that procedure. They're not looking to see if their shoe is flat. They just bang it on, and then they go straight to the foot and burn it. Which to me, you're missing something there. You want to make sure your shoe's flat before you burn it and fit it up. So like this is an important step in my eyes, is just like checking to make sure your shoe is still flat. Because by the time you get done shaping it, making alter alter alterations to your shoe, it's going to warp and you're going to not be flat anymore. So I guess it's just kind of a pet peeve and something I see is like they just get done brushing it or whatever and then they just go boom and then go fit it up on the foot. My little rant for today. <laughs> Alrighty. Get our first shoe burned down. Come on, Blazy Boy. Oh. Yeah, so the main thing with burning on shoes, I get this question a lot is what is the purpose of burning on the shoes and can you do it without? Yes, you can do it without burning on your shoes, but the main thing that burning on your shoes does is you're checking your fit. And 99% of the horses I shoe have clips on. And it's much harder to fit your clips cold than it is hot. So as I'm doing this, it's leaving an exact mark where these clips are so then I can cut away just a little bit there so that the clip fits flush with the hoof wall. You know, a properly fit clip is basically it burned into the hoof wall or notched into the hoof wall and it will be flush with the hoof wall. Like you want your clips to be flush. And then it also, when you get done burning, it leaves this black mark on the shoe. So right there I can see I'm just a little bit tight, so I need to kick that out just a little bit. And then this here, same thing as well, just tiny little bit. But that's the main thing about burning on shoes and why, why I do it and why most people do it. Alrighty, let's get some shoes nailed up. Okay. So this size foot size shoe that I'm using for this blazy boy. This is an ot, or which would be considered as a zero. I'm not 100% sure where the zero and ot come from. Like I don't know what ot means, but as far as like when you're buying shoes they go ot, one, two, three, etc. And then smaller than ot, They go uh, double lock, triple lock, quad lock, and so on. Yeah, I'm using a size Ott St. Croix Eventer Plus. And then these nails that I'm putting in him, 
These are uh, Liberty Combo 5 Slims. So since he's kind of got a little bit of thrush going on right here in the frog, this area, I'm going to put some of this thrush, thrush medication in there. And this is made by Diamond brand. Uh, the label's obviously rubbed off, but I like this over... Uh, some other applications like Thrustbuster or Duracell, just because it's a little bit of a thicker uh, liquid, I guess. And it's got a uh, a little bit of a tip on it, so you can direct where you're squirting a lot easier. And horseshoe nails, they actually have a uh, little emblem on the inside of them. So horseshoe nails are designed to, as you're driving them into the foot, they will naturally drive out of the hoof. So the back side of them is straight, and then the, uh, the inside of them has a little bit of a bevel on them. So that as you're driving it, it's going to try and exit the, the hoof. Meg! My ferocious guard dog over there, barking at some chickens. some more of this thrush applicator in there. This one there doesn't necessarily have like the thrush like that other one did, but just preventative maintenance, proactive. All right, get these feet clinched up. If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite part of this video was. And then also, if you'd like, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. I think it's important at this step, whenever you're rasping on the dorsal hoof wall, take pride in your work. Don't leave rasp marks in the hoof. Leave it nice and smooth.
And you don't gotta get too crazy with the sanding system. A little sand and sludge works great. Alright, one more. Yeah, I know my lighting's not the greatest right at this angle. Just because the sun's kind of at our backs. Alrighty, everyone, thanks for watching another episode on Pacific Northwest Farrier Show. Just kind of showing you a little video on some everyday horseshoeing with old Blazy Boy, just a retired, retired horse, campaigner, and a buddy for old Perry over here, if you can see him. There he is. Anyways, hit that like button, subscribe if you liked it, and we'll see you at the next one.